Ryan Newman off turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air goes oh. Newman. Imagine you are seconds away from winning the Daytona 500. And in a blink of an eye, everyone you have ever loved, every memory you have ever had, everything you have ever owned is about to be taken away from you. Except it wasn't. Your name is Ryan Newman. And because of the sacrifices of others, pictures like this are possible. In this video, we will break down not only the safety measures in place that saved his life, but the genius engineering behind them and how Ryan Newman physically survived this horrific crash. And that's all coming up right after this. February 18th, 2001, perhaps one of the darkest days in NASCAR history. As the 43rd running of the Daytona 500 came to an end, Dale Earnhardt Sr. hit the wall head on and was tragically killed. NASCAR has had a history of fatal crashes. A total of 28 brave drivers have lost their lives on the track since 1952. Prior to Dale Sr.'s wreck, NASCAR did take safety seriously. However, there were some things that drivers could get away with. Dale wore an open face helmet, something that did not protect the jaw or neck of the driver. And though it had been around since the 1980s, the Hans device, a restraint system designed to prevent Basler skull fractures, what killed drivers Adam Petty, Kenny Irwin, Neil Bonnet, Dale Sr., and many others, was largely mocked and not used. Drivers like Dale Sr. complained that it limited head movement and visibility. After Dale's death, a slew of safety measures went into place. The Hans device was made mandatory, spring-loaded seats and full-face helmets. Innovations pushed by drivers like Jeff Bodine were implemented. Nowadays, the head and neck area is protected. Seats surround the driver. Multiple harness secure him or her in place. Tracks were made safer by installing barriers that removed hard materials like concrete and steel and allowed the walls to give on impact. Restrictor plates, window nets, the fireproof suit, and the Nomex hood, roof flaps, spotters, better roll cages, all of these things contribute to one number, zero. The number of NASCAR fatalities since Dell Sr. And all of these safety factors saved Ryan Newman's life. Now, let's take a deeper look at the crash. Despite all the safety measures in place, horrific crashes in all forms of racing are going to happen, especially on super speedways. As the aerodynamic packages on these cars encourage tight racing and limits the amount of pull away speed, cars are going to be jammed together and fighting for position. Crashes are inevitable. Here we are on the backstretch of the 2020 Daytona 500. Ryan Newman is in the lead when Ryan Blaney moves to the inside right behind Newman who moves to block him. Blaney, who has a ton of momentum, moves right next to Newman's bumper, gets him loose, and he hits the wall. This is impact one. At a speed of over 200 miles per hour, Newman hits the safer barrier almost head on, but luckily his rear bumper spun out so much that he contacts the wall at about a 15 degree angle, but also on the driver's side. A Gen 6 car weighs about 3,300 pounds. Newton's second law states that force equals mass times acceleration. At that weight and speed, if it had been a direct impact, Newman's car would have hit the wall at a little less than 135,000 newtons of force, or converted to kinetic energy, 4,412,672 foot-pounds of force. 39,000 times the force of a rifle shot, 2,900 times the force of a sledgehammer hitting a brick. Though much of that energy is absorbed in the safer barrier, his frame and roll cage, which we will talk about in a bit, Newton's remaining laws come into play. The first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by another force. The critical object in motion here is Ryan Newman's head, and like the car it's in, is also moving at 200 miles per hour when it hits the wall. Luckily, the Hans device shown here is what prevents his head from being jerked forward and stops a basilar skull fracture from happening. Such a simple thing can stop the force of 2,900 sledgehammers. Ryan survives the first impact, which luckily wasn't completely head on, but he's far from done. After the first impact, Newman spins off the wall and the car is turned upside down. 
Frighteningly, his car turns again and is struck directly on the driver's side by Corey LaJoy's car. First, let's talk about the whipping and spinning action. Ryan's head is luckily protected by his seat, which wraps around his head and helps prevent side-to-side -side movement. Sure, it's not comfortable, but it's much better than decapitation. Now we get to the truly scary part of this wreck and the miracle that is the Gen 6 roll cage. The Joy's car strikes the number 6, significantly impacting the roll cage and nearly ending Newman's life. Let's look at the design of the car from above and measure out just how deep this impact is. By my estimation, Newman comes within inches of LaJoy's bumper, hitting him directly. Fortunately, because the front bumper is angled up and the side of the car is also angled, much of the force is directed into the roll cage, a steel temple designed to not only absorb impact and crumple, but also be rigid enough to protect the driver. In this case, had Newman not been upside down, the results could have been dramatically different. The NASCAR chassis has evolved over time, and with the 2020 car, you have multiple life-saving measures in the frame. A steel bar that runs down the middle of the windshield, an anti-intrusion plate in the door. The highest quality welds within a computer design frame, designed to save lives. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The force of the impact has to go somewhere, and in this case, it thankfully goes into the roll cage not the driver. Newman's law states that for this crash and every impact, there is an equally horrific reaction. The vehicle is now launched airborne, almost two and a half stories above the ground, and his car nearly rotates 540 degrees before again landing on the driver's side. Ryan is having a terrible day. The frame protects him, but now he is upside down, fuel is leaking, and sparks are flying, which takes us to our final life-saving measures. Cars burn fuel. Fuel is flammable. Humans are also flammable. You get where I'm going with this. After two major impacts, going airborne, landing on his roof, and still skidding, Ryan has one more thing to deal with. His car is sparking and gas is leaking from the tank. A NASCAR fuel cell is actually really well designed. It has a built-in fire extinguisher, a separate steel cage around it, a steel outer shell, and an inner bladder designed to prevent rupture during a crash. Some of this technology is used in military vehicles to combat improvised explosives. However, in this case, you can clearly see Newman's fuel cell ruptured and is leaking. Flames sit astonishingly close to the 98 octane gas. It's only a matter of time before it blows. How that didn't happen is a miracle too. In this shot, I thought the cockpit was already on fire and Newman was, for a lack of a better expression, toast. But it didn't ignite. Perhaps it was the built-in fire extinguisher, or the rupture was small enough to not expunge a huge amount of fuel at once. Maybe it was just dumb luck. Fortunately, the safety crews got there in time, assessed the situation, and put out the fire. Even with the sparks and flames in the cabin, Newman was wearing a fireproof suit and Nomex hood underneath his helmet, so luckily no burn injuries were reported. The car had finally come to a stop. The crash was over. It took considerable amount of time to remove Newman from the car and get him to the hospital, and when all was said and done, this is what it looked like. The entire NASCAR world waited for word of his health, and many feared the worst. Luckily, Newman went from serious condition to stable and ultimately walked out of the hospital under his own power. In a statement, he disclosed he did not have any internal organ damage, no broken bones, but did suffer a head injury for which he is being treated. It is unclear as to when he will race again, but the fact that he is alive and able to have moments like this is okay too. By the grace of God, a little bit of luck, the sacrifices of others, and the tireless work of safety engineers and crews, NASCAR hasn't suffered a fatality since that dark February day in 2001. Crashes are going to happen. And if your name is Ryan Newman, hopefully you'll be out on the track again soon. Let's go racing, boys. Ryan Newman, Ryan Newman, Roger Pinsky wow. win the Daytona 500. Way to go, guys, way to go. Roger Pinsky's Woo. first restricted plate win and his first one-two finish. And done it in style, man, one-two. Hello, Newman. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to Black Flags Matter, who I can't thank enough for helping me out with this video. And though you might not have all the safety features as a NASCAR has, remember to always wear your seatbelt 
never drive intoxicated, and for God's sakes, put that f***ing phone down while you're driving. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.